Damien Hart. He would be in his mid-twenties if he wasn't being fried in hell. After Kiyoya beat Damien in Haiti City, he got mentally cooked. As a result of the city's destruction soon following the battle, Damien died and thus ended up permanently in the afterlife. There are several paths a soul can travel after death in the Beyblade world, but his deserved eternal damnation. Damien wound up in the Underworld, which is actually a parallel dimension to our own. He was able to control a very small part of it using his bay back when he was alive, but over the course of a decade, he cultivated the intelligence and willpower to rule the realm with an iron fist, essentially becoming its ruler. His subjects are the numerous souls of the blader spirits he crushed while in the living world. The more darkness in a blader soul, the less resistant they are to Damien's command. Those such as Doji, Pluto, and Rago are Damien's strongest soldiers. Mods, crush his skull. It's not known how they came to meet down in the underworld, but in order to come back to life, Ryuga had to run a gauntlet through Doji, Pluto, Rago, and Damien. Ryuga is resistant to Damien's command because of the fact that he once beat the Dark Power. With that being said, Ryuga beat Doji and Pluto with relative ease. Rago was another story. Nemesis got a power amp from Damien's control, so this was going to be Ryuga's hardest battle to date. Unlike their battle in Mexico, however, Ryuga had nothing to lose. In a fierce, violent, and rapid series of clashes that rattled the entire dimension of the underworld, Ryuga just barely stands victorious. The last man standing was Damien. It was clear that because of Damien's status as ruler of the underworld, that his power boost was unquantifiable. He, he's literally, I mean, like I have to break character, like he's literally saying at this point, not even Ryuga's touching that. But beating Damien wasn't the Dragon Emperor's goal. It was to go Damien into using Hades Gate so that Ryuga could push through it and end up once again on Earth. If the Hades Gate can drag the opponent into Hades, then it's also a doorway out of it. Ryuga, for once, played it slowly, working on breaking Damien's ego down so that the despot could fall into Ryuga's trap. Turns out, it's not that hard to trigger a 5-4 white guy, so Ryuga's plan eventually worked, and he was freed from the afterlife. But compared to the hell that he had to go through to get to this point, both figuratively and literally, things were quiet. Too quiet with his main adversaries already defeated and the world having moved past him. Ryuga questions his purpose. All the while, Damien continued to rule the underworld with the souls of the broken fawning at his feet. Damien's bay is Phantom Kerbex, UW145EWD. It's much more defense focused than Hades Kerbex. Its strength comes from the souls of the crushed who are trapped in the PC frame on Phantom's fusion wheel. Energy Ring, Curb X2. Now has a primarily crimson color with black and gold accents. The chains of the Cerberus cover the bay's fusion wheel, providing an extra layer of protection from above. It's significantly heavier than the original Curb X ring, being almost made entirely of metal. Fusion Wheel, Phantom 2. This version of the Phantom Wheel was specifically cultivated to match Damien's sadistic personality. The wheel's normally round edge is now adorned with tiny jagged spikes that slowly chip damage from the opponent's bay when in a drawn out battle. The entire wheel is pitch black. This new version of UW145 evolved in conjunction with the Phantom Wheel. It can change modes to expose Phantom spikes or cover them to create a round edge. EWD is a variation of wide defense that fashions a free spinning bottom when used with an ideal Beyblade combination. It is said to possess near limitless stamina. Special move one, Hades Drive. Kerbex circles the stadium at intense speeds. As a result of the friction, 
An inescapable wall of hellfire erupts from the ground. Special move two, Hades Gate. Summons a gigantic demonic door which opens to the fires of the underworld. On Earth, it sends the opponent to Hades. In Hades, it sends the opponent back to Earth. It's one of the only man-made methods of traveling between the living world and the dead. Dark move, Judgment Day. The three guard dogs of Hades fly toward the enemy. Engulfed in a dark purple aura and devour the opposing bay. It's possible to resist this special move if the opposing blader in question has a strong enough spirit. Damien has always been built up to be more than what he actually is. He's had the pretense of power, but that power is ultimately fruitless in the long run. He used to crush souls in the world championships, but at the end of the day, that meant nothing because he was the one standing alone with a broken spirit when he died, while the people once under his heel moved on. Now he's become the ruler of the underworld, but one day he will realize that his quest for control is futile and that he's been imprisoned by his own malice for all of eternity. Damien is short. He could jump and punch up and barely hit Ryuga in the knees. All of his evil manifested in a vertically challenged body. He makes a middle schooler look like Yao Ming. Honestly, the real hell here is that he's unable to wash his hands without a stool. I wanted to give Damien an even more dramatic and grand appearance than we saw in the series. Now he's not just a kid playing Satan, he is Satan. But all the while, it still feels like a high schooler playing dress up because, let's face it, Damien is wearing much bigger shoes than he was ever destined for. And I'm not just saying that because he's small. I mean in the sense that he was a weak, spiritless blader with no purpose that was artificially given power. Zeo, Jack, and Faust moved on, but Damien is the only member of Starbreaker who honestly doesn't get a happy ending. And if you ask me, I don't think he deserves one. Party Rock is in the house tonight. I'm going to keep making fun of your height. Beyblade has only teased to supernatural elements, but there's a radiant opportunity for them to be explored in full detail. Realms like Hades, Tsubasa's dark space, the the gal the fuck like the galaxy thing that Jenga transports anyone to when they, when he needs to do to talk no jutsu. Uh, those are obviously aestheticized and dramatized symbols of the character's inner struggles, but with the insane godlike feats that we actually see in the Metal Saga, they don't have to be just that. Like, let's give these guys superpowers!
That's it, buddy.